Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is a show for you. Welcome to episode 9 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we're going to be going over the Kirkordontosaurid family. So George, why did you select these models for this episode? The reason I wanted to talk about this family specifically is because it is one of the largest theropod families that rivals even that of T-Rex. And this is the first time I've seen a lot of these species be released by a single toy company. So it was my grand idea to bring them all together for comparisons for all those completionist collectors out there to see just how they pair up right next to each other. I also wanted to do this to show the differences and similarities of members within the same family. Carcarate on Sorday. So we have six different PNSO models to review today. We just looked at two of them in our last episode, episode eight, where we reviewed the Giganotosaurus. So if you have not seen that episode, check out the link below so that you can get the baseline on those two models. But let's run through those two models again quickly, George. Sure. Let's start with the older model. This Giganotosaurus is one that I have personally in my collection. It's a big boy. And it has a little bit of an underbite, so it gives it a little bit of character. But this one was my one of my top three choices of the previous video. But my top choice was the more recent model of Giganotosaurus. And here they are face to face. You can kind of see all the differences there. This guy has a bigger skull. This and no underbite. So it's kinda it's kinda sad. But side by side, these guys are very similar in size. I will say that this guy's a bit chonkier, but overall proportions this one is the winner versus this one thanks for that quick recap george let's move on to mila the mapusaurus mila the mapusaurus so mapusaurus believe it or not lived in the same place as giganotosaurus although a little bit of a different time period and i gotta say the color on this one is beautiful it's kind of like a a nice purple mauve and with a rouge tint to it it's got that classic carcarodontosaurid skull Big and long, but narrow. If you look at their teeth, they've got these proportionate ridges all throughout. They're, I mean, they're like ridges, and they also did have ridges, but they're kind of hard to see unless you zoom in. And I gotta say, this guy was a beast. Almost as big as Giganotosaurus, but not in the same class, I would say. Mostly because it was almost like five, five to ten feet shorter in length than Giganotosaurus, but still deadly. This guy would definitely eat long neck sore pods for breakfast, but I like this one. George, how are they able to differentiate that they found a new species of dinosaur as opposed to simply a variation of a previously found version? That's a great question. So, um, we paleontologists try to look at several differences in the skeletal uh, makeup of these dinosaurs and some of the things that make them different species could be things like joints in the in the arms or the feet slight variations in the length of the backbones like let's say for example this back actually protrudes a little bit more than the giganotosaurus this ridge back you're going to start to see in some of the other models that we're going to cover today but this is one of the main differences between the giganotosaurus and the mapusaurus but they are very similar and in fact in the early days of its discovery, people did think it was another example or an earlier type of Giganotosaurus. Let's move on then, George. Mongo the Meraxes, Meraxes Giga. So the Giga name made it into the species of this particular Kirkurodontosaurid. Now this guy was smaller and it also lived in South America, just not in the same region as the other two. Now Mongo here has a name that some of you might recognize from Game of Thrones. Meraxes was actually the name of the dragon from the Tigerian clan, so that's pretty cool that they named it after that, you know. Nerds are very prolific in paleontology, and not just about dinosaurs, but other t kinds of topics. So I kind of like that origin of its name. And look at that, this one's a nice blue hue with a little bit of rouge at the front. And I gotta say, man, they really went all out with the paint schemes of these just to differentiate them. Now, notice the skull, as we cover with all of our Kirkardontosaurids. This one's shorter. This one's not as long as the other ones. The other ones have a greater length, but still that same kind of jaw build for a nice strong bite. And it is a lot more petite when it comes to the musculature, so this was not a kind of robust hunter. This was more of a speedy kind of predator. This guy was about Allosaurus size, which for you, the who are at home who don't know how big Allosaurus was, about 30 something feet, almost to the size of T-Rex though. Um, so it was a little bit bigger than Allosaurus, but smaller than T-Rex. Uh, those are my general meat-eating dinosaur rulers 
And the previous ones that I covered were as big as T-Rex or bigger, just for reference. I also just noticed something with the Miraxis Gigas. This little guy may have been small, but boy, did it have a large claw under its feet in the inner toe. Much, It's like a raptor claw, but not curved. It's just straight out. Being smaller, it probably needed that extra weaponry to take down large prey. And I'm kind of sad I just noticed it now. So that one's pretty neat. Couple questions. When you say the previous ones, did you mean all three that we had looked at so far were bigger than this model? Yes. So the three previous uh, dinosaurs were bigger than the one I just talked about, Mungo. So Mungo was a bit smaller, both in real life and in the model. So they, they scale well, which I really enjoy. I love dinosaur toys that scale well. As an aside, when you said that we may recognize the name, I thought you were talking about the name Mongo, and I was thinking of Mongo from the movie Blazing Saddles. Because as you know, Mongo, only a pawn in the game of life. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a double reference there. All right, let's look at Fergus. This is the only large North American Carcharodontosaur that we know of to date. And this guy was huge. This dinosaur measured up to 36 to 38 feet in length. And you can see that in the figure. You'll notice a big difference compared to the other ones that it has a big ridge back. Not unlike the one we saw on the Mapusaurus, which was a little bit smaller, maybe even more than half the size of it. But this guy is, this guy is beefy. The Acrocanthosaurus is very near and dear to my heart because this was the first theropod fossil that I ever encountered in Texas, which if you guys have heard of Dinosaur State Park in Texas, they have footprints of this Acrocanthosaurus following its prey, a Sauroposeidon, which is a big long neck dinosaur. And man, it makes sense because this guy was huge. On the size scale, I'd put it right next to the Giganotosaurus and the Mapusaurus. So this is probably the third biggest um, of its of its kind. The teeth are a little bit different on the Acrocanthosaurus and the Giganotosaurus and uh, Carcharodontosaurus because it's more of a straight line than a curve, which probably meant that it hunted a bit differently, especially with that ridgeback. This ridgeback had muscle attachments. So why do you need extra muscle on your back and neck? Well, these back muscles connect to the neck. So Polly ripped off big chunks of meat from its prey. Its arms are also a little bit larger than T-Rex, similar to other Carcharodontosaurids. But man, I got to say, this is this is quite the nostalgic creature for me. Um, even had my first date with my fiance there at a Dinosaur State Park. I might I might walk away with that one. Coming up next is Gamba the Carcharodontosaurus. So we went over South America and North America, and now we're going over an African Carcharodontosaurid. Now this guy is up there in size with the Acrocanthosaurus, maybe even a little bit longer, closer to 40 feet. And this Carcharodontosaurus, man, look at that tiger striping. I, I really like that. Look at the teeth. They have that curvature that the Acrocanthosaurus didn't, more akin to the Giganotosaurus and the Mapusaurus and even Mungo the Meraxes. Its arms are a little bit tinier than the other Carcharodontosaurus that we've seen so far. And man, look at that. That is a beautiful figure. This guy, some of you may already know this, lived alongside another big theropod called Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus was a little bit bigger than this guy, but they might have fought over food, whether it was a freshly killed fish from a Spinosaurus or a freshly killed carcass from Carcharodontosaurus, um, which we know that they probably ate different kinds of foods, but Hey, a free meal is a free meal, so that's a showdown I would like to see. But we're talking about Carcharodontosaurus today, so going back to it, this guy's the only uh, Carcharodontosaur from North Africa that has been found so far. There are other ones that unfortunately don't have toys made of them so far, but I gotta say, this is making quite the lineup for Carcharodontosaurus Day. Let's take a look at him side by side, George. Looking at him from the top, what jumps out at you? Yes, the ridgebacks really pop out to me. So the old PNSO, Giganotosaurus, has these scoots that are not present in the fossil record. But Acrocanthosaurus' spines are. So this is the only dinosaur from these family members that I would say has those spikes accurately placed on there. Now, the other ones have pretty smooth backs with the exception of the Mapusaurus, which also has a slight raised ridge, which is 
a lot smaller than Acrocanthosaurus, but it's there. So they probably hunted in a similar manner. I do notice that the stripings are really well done on all of these. Three out of the six have stripes that are very visible, and two of them have kind of occluded stripes that are mixing into the main paint coat, which makes it really beautiful. Let's take a look at the faces side by side, George. Yeah, just how short the Mungo Meraxes ones is. Meraxes Gigas, it is called Gigas, but it is actually the smallest of the lineup. So it's kind of cute seeing just how petite it is compared to its other cousins. Their lengths are pretty consistent with their modern day equivalent measurements. But man, these guys were huge. I would say that these guys are pretty well proportioned if you're trying to get them all together. So George... Let's say you could only afford one of these models. Which one will you be selecting? Don't make me do that. I'd, I'd want to get them all. Uh, if I had to get one, I'd have to get the poster child, which is the Giganotosaurus. The new version. If you were saying you could only pick one of these ever, I'd pick that one because that's the one that everyone knows about. This is the most accurate one that I've seen so far, and I do like the coloring on it, so I really like that about it. Did you ever notice that George doesn't ask me for my opinions? Well, luckily, I'm the editor, so I can put them in anyways. In this case, I disagree with George. My favorite is Mungo the Meraxi, not just because of the reference to Blazing Saddles, but I like it because of the striping, its coloring is very eye-catching, and also simply because it's the smallest. It probably was the underdog back in its day, and I generally root for the underdog. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments down below. If you disagree with George, definitely let him know that you disagree with him. We previously mentioned the Giganotosaurus video, but we also have already recorded a Carcodontosaurus video where we compare those figures from the different manufacturers. If you have not seen that video, please take a look at that one also. And as always, please just give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.